If you've ever wanted to play PS5 or PS4 games on your Steam Deck, then you are in luck because not only is it possible, it's incredibly easy to set up and is absolutely free. Let's quickly go over every step necessary to remote play from your Sony console to your Steam Deck, and then I'll give you some quick tips to make your experience flawless. First things first, you will need a PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 console. Doesn't matter if it's digital only or the pro version or whatever, any of them will work. Ideally, you would want your console to be hooked up using a wired ethernet cable to your router rather than Wi-Fi. Personally, I've had good success using only Wi-Fi, but the experience is much more seamless and reliable using a wired connection. So if you only have Wi-Fi available for your console, then the quality of your remote play won't be as good as it could be, but also on the reliability of your Wi-Fi strength, where you are located in your house, and other factors. Also note, this guide will only go over local remote play, meaning using your Steam Deck while connected to the same router as your PlayStation. It is possible to remote play from outside your home, but this requires a lot of settings in your personal internet router, and since everyone's router is different, it's not something I want to go into today. I will drop a link to a few guides in the description if you feel comfortable enough to change some ports in your router settings that will allow you to remote play from your Steam Deck outside of your home. I will be demonstrating these next steps on a PlayStation 5, but do know that the instructions will be almost identical on a PS4, as the console's menus are very similar. Boot up your PlayStation and let's go into the settings. Then go down to System. It's in this menu where we will see Remote Play and need to make sure that this is activated. If you skip this step, you're done. You can't go any further. So even if you think you have it enabled, go check. Then we need to go down to Power Saving and go to Features Available in Rest Mode and make sure Enable Turning On from Network is enabled. This will allow us to turn on the PS5 from our Steam Deck and will save a lot of hassle in the future. Okay, time to move over to your Steam Deck. While technically you can do these next steps using the touchpad and on-screen keyboard, I really do recommend using a physical mouse and keyboard if you can. Let's go into desktop mode by pressing the Steam button in the bottom left of the Steam Deck, then going down to power and hitting switch to desktop mode. This will bring us into the Steam OS desktop where we can use the internet browser. Let's go down to Firefox and Google Chiaki 4 Deck. And the second option should be the GitHub setup page. This is a flat pack created by some great Steam Deck fans that will allow us to not only download Chiaki, but will do the extra work automatically like configuring for the Steam Deck and more. Once you have their GitHub page open, go to Setup in the top left of the screen, and then down to Installation. This page provides us the console command to use to install the flat pack. Let's go ahead and copy this entire line by clicking the Copy button at the end of the box. So we need to open up the console on our Steam Deck, but luckily it's very easy. Go down to the bottom left of your screen and click the Steam Deck logo. Hover over System near the bottom. And right next to it, you should see Console with a K. Let's go ahead and open that up. Once the console is open, you can right click inside the box and hit Paste to add the command that we copied. Hit Enter. Once it begins, it should go through the installation process very quickly. You should see Installation Complete at the bottom to confirm that it is done. Back on the website we opened, we need to connect to Chiaki to your specific PlayStation Network account. So in the top left, let's hit Configuration. And since this is our first time using Chiaki, let's hit New to using Chiaki on the Steam Deck. The second step has another console command that we need to copy, so once again, click the Copy button and right-click paste it into your console. The console window will provide instructions to go further, providing a link you need to copy and paste into a new tab in your browser. You can simply right click it and select open link and it will bring it up in a new tab. This is the official Sony website, so simply log into your PlayStation Network ID. Mine is gigachad69420xxx of course. You'll probably have to do a verify code from your email, so just be sure you have access to that and follow the instructions. Okay, once you get past that, you will get shown a blank page with simply the word redirect at the top left. I know this looks like an error page, but this is exactly what we want. Once you see this page, you need to right click the URL and copy. We are going to right click paste this into that same console window we've been using. If you ever get lost during all this, just make sure the console has the instructions above what we are doing so you know you're pasting it into the right spot. Afterwards, the console will say, this is your account ID. Copy the account ID provided you receive and store it in a safe place. This is the account ID used for remote play that is associated with your PlayStation. If you messed up anything to this point, Feel free to start at the previous console commands we used, and it will take you through the process again. Once you have your account ID copied, we need to configure Chiaki. So go to the bottom left Steam Deck logo of your desktop and hover over Games. You should see Chiaki for Deck to the right, so go ahead and open it. 
After opening, you should see your PlayStation device in the list below. If your console is not appearing, make sure your Steam Deck is on the same wireless network as your PlayStation system and that the PlayStation console is either turned on or in sleep slash rest mode. If this doesn't work, you can always try restarting your Steam Deck and connecting to the network again. Let's click on the box and bring up the registration window. You need to choose your console type from the list. And then we need to put in the account ID. This is that code that we got from the console earlier that I told you to save. You can enter that here. Remember, this is not your PlayStation Network login info. Now where it says pin, this is going to be the pin that is located on your Sony console. To find this pin, simply go back to your PlayStation settings, then system, remote play, and finally link device. This is the pin that needs to be inputted into the field. This number will change very often, so don't try to save it from one day and then use it another. Pull it up when you get to this part. After hitting register, you should get a congrats window saying that it has been registered. We can close these windows and to confirm that it worked, we can see next to our console ID, it should say the word registered. Now, technically that is all it takes to get it going. You could simply click the box and start playing, but there are a few settings that I like to change to improve my overall experience. Click the cogwheel in the top right of this window to go to settings. The settings I like to change in here are first the action on disconnect. If I turn off my Steam Deck, I don't want my PS5 to keep running. So I like to set this to enter sleep mode. If you are playing on a PS5 or a PS4 Pro, you should set the resolution to 1080p for better quality. Set the FPS to 60, and I change my bitrate to 30,000 for a smoother experience. Now you can play around with this a little bit, but the hardware decode method for me has only been super reliable on Vapey. I tried the other ones and they didn't work well for me, so I really recommend changing this to Vapey. But you can always play around with these settings in the future. If you experience any choppiness while playing under these settings, it's possible that your Wi-Fi connection is not strong enough. So you can come back and lower the bitrate the resolution, or the FPS to try to increase your performance. We are almost done here. Just need to run one more script that will automate some annoyances later on. In the Chiaki window, you should see the IP address of your PlayStation console. Write this down or keep the window open as we're gonna need it soon. Go back to your GitHub browser, and in the top left, hit Automation. Scroll down to step three, and we should see another console command that we need to copy. Open the console window again, and right-click paste this command and hit Enter. It will ask you a few questions to go through select your console that you are using. I'm on PS5, so I will input two. We are using IP in this guide, so let's go one. And here is where we will input the IP address of your PlayStation. Once again, you can get this in your Chiaki window. Just type it in here and hit enter. This guide is only for home use, so let's hit N. And then we will do one for full screen. For PlayStation login passcode, this is only if your console has parental controls enabled to change settings. For most people, I'm going to assume you don't have this enabled, so go ahead and say N for no. You can test the script if you'd like and it will boot your PlayStation and connect to it, but I'm pretty sure we did it right, so I'm just going to hit N. Once you get this artwork down here for Chiaki for Deck scripted, you can finally close the console window. We need to add Chiaki to gaming mode now. So on your desktop, let's launch Steam. After opening, hit Games at the top of the window and then select Add Non-Steam Game to my library. We need to browse for Chiaki, so bear with me on this journey. Home, deck, dot var, app, re.chiaki.chiaki for deck, config, chiaki, and then finally, chiaki-launcher.sh. If you don't see it here, make sure you have all files displayed in the drop-down menu. Then select chiaki-launcher.sh and hit open. Make sure it's selected and hit add selected programs. If we go to our library, we should see Chiaki Launcher in our list of games. Let's right click it and go down to properties. We need to rename this so it can acquire the proper gamepad settings. So rename it to simply Chiaki for Deck, all one word. I don't recommend naming it anything else as it will make getting the controls more complicated. So just do Chiaki for Deck, then exit the window. So we are officially done in desktop mode. We can simply click the icon on our desktop that says return to gaming mode. Once the Steam Deck restarts, you should be able to go to your Steam library and see Chiaki under Games. Let's select it. And on the right side, we should see a little icon with a game controller. Let's open it up. Now, you could create your own profile if you want, but the easiest way is to just use the community layout created by this Flatpak creator. Click the arrow on the controller setup, and then move to the Community Layouts tab. Here, you should see Chiaki for Deck Plus by gmoney 23 If you don't see this here, you are either not connected to the internet or you didn't rename your game Chiaki for Deck correctly. So please go back and double check. 
Let's select the Chiaki for Deck Plus option. This is a great option because this changes the touchscreen of the Steam Deck to act as the touchpad of the DualSense controller. So feel free to use native gestures as you would on your PS5 controller. Hit apply, and then we can finally launch Chiaki for Deck. Because of the automation script we did, we can bypass the setup window and it will just boot directly into the PlayStation every time. If your PS5 is in rest mode, the boot up will take a few extra seconds, so just be patient and it should pop up. Once you are connected, you will see that the quality is actually pretty good. I've seen no noticeable lag or input delay while playing through the entirety of Crisis Core, God of War, and a few other titles. The only issues I've had is sometimes some green flashing for a second or two randomly, but that graphical error is few and far between. I prefer playing remote through my PS5 rather than playing the Steam ports of some of these games because the battery length on the Steam Deck is insane. If you played God of War on Steam Deck, you won't get to two hours played without the battery dying. But on remote play, since all the heavy lifting is being done by your PlayStation, you could easily get to five or six hours battery time. It also doesn't make the fan blast at full speed compared to playing a AAA game, so you get a quieter and cooler experience playing through some really graphically intense games. I get a pretty consistent 60 FPS and a really amazing experience while playing through my PlayStation games. To the people saying they can't notice a difference between remote play and playing natively on the PlayStation, I don't know about that. Putting them side by side when the Steam Deck is docked, you can certainly tell the remote play is a little fuzzy compared to the real thing. But while playing on the Steam Deck 7 inch screen, it's honestly like 90% of the way there. I think the benefits of playing remote outweigh the negatives if you have a good Wi-Fi connection. So give it a shot and see how it works for you. I hope this guy gets you gaming on your Steam Deck more and hope you enjoy playing PlayStation games on your deck. If this video brought value to you, Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Steam Deck and technology content. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.